In this tutorial, we're going to walk you through the streaming and recording settings of your data video encoder. Whether you have an NVS33 or a data video streaming studio, this video will show you how everything works. To access the user interface of your data video NVS33 or video streaming studio using the browser of your computer or tablet, you will need to network it with your router and assign it an IP address. To learn how to do that and connect it to your tablet or computer, there's a link to a tutorial in the description below. Now that you have everything connected, here is the user interface of the NVS33, which we are using in this tutorial. However, if you have a data video video streaming studio like the HS3200, HS1600T, or HS1300, all of these steps will apply to it as well. First, on your data video encoder's user interface, you'll see the submenu for status, where you can monitor your general settings and see what features are enabled. Next, there is the Operation Mode tab. Select it, and here, you can access all the settings for recording and streaming. First, you will see the video input source. You can select between HDMI and SDI, which you can also do in the front buttons of your data video encoder. To the right, you will see audio source. Digital audio is the audio embedded in from your video source, and selecting this will use only that audio in your live stream. Selecting RCA analog audio only uses the external audio connected to the RCA stereo input on the back of your data video encoder, and embeds it into your video stream. Audio mixer mode will combine both the embedded audio from your video input and the external audio input. Manually selecting record and stream, record only, and stream only will start the task on your data video encoder. You may be wondering, why not just set it to record and stream all the time? Well, there are some bitrate caps in record plus stream. You can only record and stream at a combined 10 megabits per second. For instance, if you want to max out your bitrate at 8 megabits per second for recording, your streaming bitrate will be capped out at 2 megabits per second, which is fairly low for a live stream. So if we go to 5 for the recording bitrate, we can now stream at 5 megabits per second, and that's a great compromise. You're getting a high quality video stream for your recording that you can upload later, as well as your stream. Next, let's take a look at the record only settings. You will see the three bitrate modes here, high, medium, and low. High will record at 15 megabits per second. Low will record at 8 megabits per second. Medium will record at 12 megabits per second. Your resolution can be the same as your input, or you can scale it. We recommend staying at the native frame rate for your encoder, and it will push it to your CDN just fine. For profile, you can set it to high, medium, or baseline. Typically, high will work just fine for everything you want to do. High profile encodings are widely supported and have the best quality. Audio bitrate can go all the way up to 384 kilobits per second. GOP is good to leave at 60 or equal to your frame rate. Here, you can reset the name of the file for your recording. This will limit the size of your video. Generally, 4 gigabytes will be just fine as it works with FAT32 formatted media as well as XFAT and NTFS. Next, let's look at the streaming settings. Make sure you check the recommended settings with your CDN or other destination. Once again, you can use the native resolution or you can scale it. Frame rate can be the same as your input. Generally, this will work best but you can also change it. You will definitely want to check with your CDN regarding the profile. High will give you the best quality. For video bitrate, 8 megabits per second is a really good quality stream, but make sure your CDN could accept it, and also check your internet connection. You can see a Tech Tip Tuesday video in the description below to know more about connection speed requirements for live streaming. 128 kilobits per second is a good quality setting for audio. GOP will default at 60, most users will be streaming with RTMP, which is what you will use to stream to YouTube Live and Facebook Live. However, if you are doing RTSP, you can set that up here. You also have options to stream using TS, HLS, and SRT protocols. If you are streaming with Facebook Live, you will be copying and pasting your RTMP URL and stream key. If you are doing recording and streaming at the same time, do not forget you have those bitrate caps. There are many possibilities with encoding and delivering video. We hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or contact Data Video Support directly. You can find more links to helpful articles and tutorials for your Data Video Encoder in the description below. 
Follow us on social media for latest news and more videos. Thanks for watching.